first thing I want to start with is something for your kids, okay? And and maybe even you. I, I don't, I, you know, I don't ever make any assumptions about anybody's um, math level or math ability or math phobia or confidence in math, um, except that um, I generally find that most of the guys I work with are not as good in math as they wish they were. So if you left high school feeling stupid, it was your teacher's fault, not yours. Um, and what I want to do for your kids is to show you something that is actually very critical. It's a really critical concept that you need to make sure your kids understand. The period I'm talking about is actually when they start doing division because um, as, as old folks called them gazentas, you know, five gazenta ten two times, right? So they called them gazentas. When, uh, when kids are taught um, division, they start with something like uh, this. Okay? And the reason they do that is because this makes the mechanics of doing the division easy because you can say three goes into nine three times and then blah, 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 blah. All right, so um, you can subtract and it's very convenient. It's a convenient way to do long division, all right? Um, I don't have a problem with that. That's not, that don't, no big deal, okay? But the problem I have is that nobody ever really gets told that the reason this is the division sign is because this is a fraction. Okay, so if, you know, one number, line, another number, okay? And all a fraction is asking is how much of this, the bottom, how much of it fits into the top? Okay, that's what a fraction is. So if I were to rewrite 9 divided by 3 in the long division way as a fraction, it would be 9 divided by 3 or nine-thirds, okay? And the question that's being asked by this fraction is how many threes fit into nine? Okay, and the answer is three. So here, here's what I would like to recommend. And, and the reason why is because if you can't do fractions, you can't do algebra, and if you can't do algebra, your, your, your confidence level and, and your, your math ability and your, your graduate level, I mean, everything kind of goes downhill educationally because of math, okay? So if, if you do what I'm going to suggest you do, um, and what I sometimes tell people in class, if you have to mortgage the pig to get a tutor, you get a tutor. You do what you have to do. You find someone to teach your kid or your grandkid or whatever um, fractions. Don't so <coughs> what I recommend is any time they send home a worksheet that might say this, all right, or they might say, Sixteen divided by two. If they, if if you, if your kid gets a worksheet to bring home, and any of either of those are there, and it's probably going to be one of the two. All right. Um, now math has changed a little bit, but this is this is still something that doesn't get taught as regularly as it should. What I strongly advise you to do is to have your kid write these problems as fractions. Okay. So two goes into sixteen or 16 divided by 2 becomes 16 
divided by 2. Now, even if they just look at it and become comfortable seeing it, then they're going to be more able to work with fractions when they get into, into uh, pre-algebra and algebra. And without that, without that understanding, it's going to be pretty tough. Okay? Now, the other thing I strongly advise you to do is don't start with adding and subtracting fractions start with multiplying fractions because you just multiply top times top and bottom times bottom and that's the answer right so that's easy because they've already done their multiplication tables right so they've already done their multiplication tables I'm losing my microphone here okay well if they've done their uh, multiplication tables then if you say all right let's multiply um one half times one quarter, okay, then what that's really saying is, what is one quarter of one half? That question right there that's being asked is how much is one quarter of one half? Okay, well, you simply multiply and you get one eighth. Okay, so any of you guys who have worked with carpentry, any of you guys who've worked with micrometers, any of you guys who've built engines, anything out there that you've done, you know fractions and you know decimals pretty well. Okay, so that's easy. Well, they've already done their multiplication tables, and starting with addition is crazy because you can't do, you can't add fractions unless you can multiply. And you have to understand why you're multiplying in order to be able to multiply. So when they say flip it over and did okay, well, they need to know this first. All right. So multiplying fractions is far easier than 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 um, adding and subtracting them because that'll come last. I mean, that should be taught last. All right. Well, what if we change this to say what is one half divided by one quarter? Okay, well, what it is, it, the question being asked is, how many one quarters fit into one half? Okay, so this question up here is, how much is one fourth of one half? This question down here is, how many one quarters fit into one half? You must know those questions. Those are the questions that these problems are asking. Those are easy to answer if you pick numbers that you understand and you can teach with that. Okay? So the answer is two because if you write it as a fraction, it's one half over one quarter. Well, one half divided by one quarter is two because two one quarters fit into one half. Okay? So this question is asking how many quarters fit into a half? And here's what they're going to tell you to do. They're going to say invert and multiply. Well, yes, but they don't tell you why. Well, the reason they're doing it is because it's an algebraic function. So when your kids invert and multiply, they're actually doing algebra. All right, but nobody tells them that. So what they're going to say is take the one half, put it over here, take the one quarter, flip it over, and then multiply. Well, this is why the multiplication is so important because you're going to multiply fractions even when you're dividing them. Okay, so that's why you do multiplication first. Well, then when you flip it over and you get one half times four over one, the answer is 4 over 2 or 2. I didn't draw that very well, but there you go. Okay, so 
let's refresh. Let's review, okay? This question is asking how many twos fit into one, and the answer is a half of it. So half of two fits into one. That's pretty simple. How, many, how much of the number four fits into one? A quarter of it. That makes sense, okay? Well, to multiply them, you're asking what is one quarter of one half? All right. Well, one quarter of one half is one eighth. Multiply, multiply, one eighth, done, easy. Success rate, nearly 100%. Confidence level boosted. Never say bad things to your kid, ever, ever, ever. If they do something great, you hug them, you kiss them, you pat them on the back, you shake their hand, or you give them a cookie. Okay? But if they get it wrong, you don't say anything. You just do it again, and you do it again, and you do it again. And then finally, they'll get it right, okay? Um, this question is asking, what, oh, no, how many one quarters, sorry, I had to think about it for me. how many one quarters fit into one half? Well, the answer is two, and any of you who have ever worked with fractions and tape measures knows that. But this and this are the same question, okay? So when you do this, when you do fractions, okay, the, the first thing to remember is to teach your kid that the fraction symbol right here, that fraction symbol is the division symbol, or the division symbol is a fraction. I think I'm saying that backwards, but the division symbol is a fraction, okay? And this question and this question must be rewritten before they do their homework, or you require them to do it afterwards or whatever. Make them write these questions as this, so they at the very least understand that this, this, and this are all the same thing, okay? So that's my kind of primer on fractions, and if you've got a kid or a grandkid um, who is at that age, specifically doing um, division and multiplication in school, um, make sure they know that the f division symbol is a fraction, make sure they know the questions being asked, um, and uh, make sure they understand that you're trying to figure out how many of the bottom parts fit into the top part. That's the question being asked. And don't have them do addition first. Have them do multiplication first because it just makes it easier.